In keeping with the ancient custom and in accordance with the Constitution of the Supreme Council, each chapter of Rose Croix should observe the feast of the Paschal Lamb by an appropriate ceremony. Traditionally, this day of obligation is Maundy Thursday. In deference to the churches, which commemorate this holy day on the traditional Thursday before Easter, Rose Croix chapters are permitted to hold the ceremony on another day. The Feast of the Paschal Lamb is neither the Feast of the Passover nor the initiation of the Sacrament of Holy Communion, although it commemorates both holy days. The chapter of Rose Croix observes this beautiful and symbolic celebration of the Feast of the Paschal Lamb as memorial service honoring our brethren who have passed to their eternal reward during the preceding year. In spirit, we seem to sense their presence at the mystic banquet as we seek to strengthen the ties of brotherly love which binds our hearts in holy remembrance. In the fellowship of kindred minds, we meet to express our faith as symbolically we break the bread and drink the wine of fraternal love, becoming aware once more that the only hope of a better world still abides in the simple command of our great exemplar, love one another. The ordinance establishing the Feast of the Paschal Lamb dates back to the Old Testament narrative. And this shall be unto you a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast of the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by any ordinance forever. The table for the Feast of the Paschal Lamb is set with the following items. Three unleavened cakes are indicative of the fulfillment of the command to eat unleavened bread. The roasted egg is emblematic of the sacrifice brought on every day of the Passover week during the existence of the Temple of Jerusalem. The roasted shank bone memorializes the Paschal Lamb. The Cheriseth, on account of its brown color, is to remind the Hebrew of the clay out of which his ancestors made brick while in Egypt. The horseradish, owing to its pungent taste, is symbolic of the oppression of the Israelites at the hands of Pharaoh. The parsley is a relish usually served at every Oriental meal. The salt water or vinegar into which the parsley is dipped is provided to lead palatability to the parsley. The untouched goblet of wine expresses the readiness to bestow upon a stranger that hospitality offered in the early part of the service. Knights and friends, we gather around the altar of fraternal love, joyfully to give thanks for blessings received. To rekindle the covenant between God and thy people, and to hallow the memory of our fallen brethren. Please rise for prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be ever grateful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving of ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. In thy holy name, amen. Knights, we have assembled to commemorate the anniversary of two events, whose impression upon the scroll time fades not, but clear grows as time pass. Centuries has elapsed since Jesus of Nazareth said, Go ye into the city, and say to a certain one, I will keep the Passover at your house. But yet, the spiritual impact experienced then still comforts the hearts of the faithful and keeps their thoughts the contemplation of higher things. Let us give our attention to the Night Orator.
The feast of the Passover was first observed by the Jews in Egypt. On the tenth day of the first month, the people were ordered to take a lamb of the first year without blemish and arrange themselves by families and numbers suitable for its consumption and keep it until the fourteenth day of the month when it was to be slain and eaten with unleavened bread. The eating of unleavened bread was to continue for seven days. It was further ordained that the people take bunches of hyssop, dip it in the blood of the lamb that was slain, and strike the doorposts and lentils of the homes in which they were gathered. The destroying angel, seeing the blood, would pass over the homes of the Israelites and smote only the firstborn of the Egyptians. Thus, the blood of the Passover lamb has symbolized redemption, and this feast is observed by the Jewish people to this day. It was to the observance of this feast that Jesus gathered his disciples in the night in which he was betrayed. With full knowledge of the tragic events that were at hand, this Passover feast offered Jesus an opportunity to give to the world a striking lesson of humility by washing the feet of his disciples. In that observance of the feast, referred to by Christians as the Last Supper, he instituted the sacrament revered by all Christians as Holy Communion. As children of the same loving Father, we are to remember the admonition, a new commandment that I give unto you, that ye love one another, and the lesson in humility. So in commemoration of the feast of the Paschal Lamb, as it is called by the Knights of Rose Croix, let us again consecrate our lives to the service of God and the love of humanity. Upon this day, laden with thoughts of death, let us remember that perfect love knows no death. Although we lay aside this mortal frame and for a time are absent from our accustomed places, Yet the bonds of fraternal love cannot be severed by the sigh of time. Let us recall those in our number who, in the year that has completed, have completed this earthly existence. Knight Secretary, you will present the mystic role. Keith A. Heifer Joseph W. Moore Howard R. Schulke Quentin B. Bromwell Donald E. Howe Verlin G. Bundy James A. Mitchell Dale E. Rankin Tanley E. Fletcher Robert E. Garrett Jack Dale Oakley John K. Rasmussen Warren N. Moore Robert N. Lohman Jeffrey Johnson Charles K. Holderby Roy A. Thompson Richard L. Chenoweth James F. Woolridge David A. Doniker Harlan F. Bailey Richard L. Hunter Donald L. Hawk Harry D. Rimby, John B. Tibbs, Walter C. Stokes, Earl H. Woodrum, Dead? No, not dead. In our mystic brotherhood, we live forever. Our union is eternal. We know that the soul is immortal. That which men call death is but a liberation of that divine essence which, for a brief time, is imprisoned in these earthly bodies. It's only a transition to a fuller, freer life of the human soul. And as our brothers are immortal, 
so is our love for them. We remember them in our solemn feast and spread these tables for our brother knights Rose Croy, present with us in spirit while their bodies rest peacefully from their labors. So brother knights Rose Croy, well beloved and not forgotten, we greet you. Please rise. Lord, nourish us with the bread of thy love, and may we drink from the wine of life. Take. Eat. Give to the hungry. Take. Drink, give to the thirsty. Please rise for prayer. Uncover. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be ever grateful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving of ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. In thy holy name, amen. It is my honor to introduce Pastor Gary Sheets past most wise master of the Rose Croy line of the Valley of Springfield ancient and accepted Scottish Rite. We've been reminded today that God is continually trying to reach man, the apex of his creation. He started by nation building when he brought Israel up out of Egypt with his mighty arm after 450 years in slavery. The firstborn from Pharaoh who sat upon his throne to his lowest servant paid the price in blood by dying. Israel was enjoined to keep the feast of the Passover and never forget who their deliverer was. God instructed the death angel by saying, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Still they did not listen, and their nation was ultimately destroyed by the Chaldeans and are under the mighty yoke of Rome when Jesus of Nazareth came on the scene. He looked with compassion upon the crowds because they were harassed like sheep without a shepherd. He tried to shepherd them by healings, raising their dead, delivering their demon-possessed, and teaching them in a plain and simple way the ways of God like they had never heard before. But was killed by those who worshiped their traditions, thinking they were serving God. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, and then Jesus proved God's love for us by dying on the cross of Calvary. God took his blood and applied it to the doorposts of our lives. He once again says to us, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Jesus alone leads us out of bondage, imposed by Satan himself, and leads us into the eternal promised land of heaven. Today we honor those who've gone on before us to that fair city, the new Jerusalem. In your sorrow, he holds you to his breast. Like the good shepherd who holds his lambs, God will wipe away all tears from our eyes and there'll be no more pain or tears or death. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. What? Wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul. What wondrous love is this, that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, 
for my soul to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing and joyful be. And through eternity, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And through eternity, I'll sing on. God sent those who were to teach the men the truth and free them from ignorance and superstition. But the people blinded by prejudice preferred darkness as they were put to death. They came to teach that men are the children of one loving father and to inculcate the doctrine of human brotherhood. But the people refused to listen, took them for enemies, and put them to death. God sent these to teach men that they are free and equal in his sight. But, incited by their rulers, those who would have been their liberators have been put to death. They endeavored to set truth in the place of error, love in the place of hatred, but theirs was persecution and torture. Men received them not and put them to death. The Father hath sent them to teach mankind the truth of science and philosophy and knowledge of through greater knowledge of his powers, but bigotry prevailed Darkness ruled the earth, and they were put to death. Those who sought to liberate toiling humanity, to restore the right of free thought and free conscience, were misunderstood, persecuted, and put to death. In all ages, those who taught freedom, brotherhood, equality, truth, science, philosophy, and liberty have thus received their reward. To us, the symbol of all is Jesus of Nazareth, teacher of faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. No greater life has been lived than his. No greater law has been given than love one another. Exemplar of the true spirit, teacher of mankind, living a life of service and consecration, yet sinned against, persecuted, and betrayed. He suffered the supreme sacrifice, death upon the cross. Knights, veil of the future mercifully hides from us the vision of what is to be. From the past we receive wisdom, but ought we heed it not. For some tomorrow may never dawn, but for each of us today is bright with opportunity. As night's rose croy, we have seen the radiance from the cross. Let us strive to follow in the footsteps of him it bore, and with faith and humility carry our Masonic light into this world, that men may see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Knights of Rose Croy. Though the light of truth, brotherhood, equality may have been extinguished by intolerance and ruthless power, yet with faith, hope, and charity, we look to the day when the new law of love will rekindle them in all of their splendor.
Arise. It is written, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Then shall they walk in the way, and they foot shall not stumble. So may the light of wisdom illuminate our world. Truth, the bond of fellowship, freedom from deceit and falsehood, a mutual respect for honor, confidence in the brother's integrity, belief in the ultimate triumph of reality. It is written, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So may the light of truth illumine our world. Toleration, the will to understand and respect the opinions of others. To no man is given the right to dictate to another in matters of belief and faith. No man is infallible and is the sole possessor of truth. A Freemason grants to every man those rights which he claims for himself. So may the light of toleration illumine our world. It is written, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. He who cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is the rewarder of them who diligently seek him. We must have faith in God, faith in our fellow man, faith in ourselves. Faith is not belief in spite of evidence, but life in scorn of consequence. So may the light of faith illumine our world. It is written, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Hope in action is charity, and beauty in action is goodness. Let the inner flames of hope burn upon the altar of every human soul until he seeks righteousness because it is right, justice because it is just, goodness because it is good, and truth because it is true. So, may the light of hope illumine our world. It is written, a new commandment I give unto you. Love one another like I have loved you. If you love me, you will follow my commandments. Every man may live his own life as he will, limited only by his responsibility to God and his recognition of the right and privileges of others. Love of one's neighbor makes him a friend. Love's hope and love's dream are of a worldwide brotherhood of man under the fatherhood of God. So may the new law of love illumine our world. On a green hill far away, without a city wall stands an empty cross whereupon one died who was loved and rejected. Nearby is the empty tomb. He who was dead now lives. Garbed in the shiny raiment of the new law, he goeth before you into the life that never ends. 
May we commit ourselves anew to a higher task of building a nobler world of freedom and justice for God and humanity. As ye would that men should do unto you, do even so unto them. So may the light that never fails, the love that never forgets, and the life that never ends illumine our world. Please rise for benediction. Uncover. Unto God's gracious mercy and protection we commit you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. The officers and members of the Valley of Springfield, ancient accepted Scottish Rite, are honored to celebrate the lives of our brethren with the Feast of the Paschal Lamb. We truly miss each and every brother. We miss their presence, their dedication, and their smile. We thank our Masonic families and hope that this ceremony honors their memory.